When one man saved a wolf and her cubs, he never expected what would happen four years later. Wolves are a top predator. They are vicious, clever, and fast. But even they need a helping hand every now and then. This story took place deep in the Alaskan wilderness. One sunny spring day, a prospector called John was looking for gold along Coho Creek in the southeastern side of Alaska's Kaprinov Island. As soon as he emerged from the forest that inhabited the island, he suddenly froze. No more than 20 feet away from him, stood in a bog, was a huge Alaskan timber wolf. It had gotten caught in a trap. One that John knew belonged to one of his hunter friends, called George. Had John not been out that day, the wolf surely would have perished as George had died the previous week from a heart attack. John started to approach the wolf, hoping that he would be able to help it. Confused and scared at the approach, the wolf backed away, straining at the chain of the trap as it tried to pull itself free. That was when John noticed something very important. The wolf was a female and her teats were full of milk. This meant that somewhere on the island, there was a den full of hungry pups just waiting for their mother. John stopped in his spot in the hopes that he wouldn't frighten the mama wolf anymore. He took a good look at the wolf and guessed that she hadn't been trapped long, maybe even only a few days. That was a good sign, as it meant her pups were probably still alive. With young ones to care for, the female wolf wouldn't have strayed too far from the den, so her cubs wouldn't be more than a few miles away. But now John had a problem. He needed to help free the female canine so that she would be able to get back to her pups. However, John was worried that if he set her free, the wolf would turn aggressive and try to tear him to pieces in an effort to protect her babies. Fearful for his life, John came up with another plan that he hoped would work instead. He decided to search for her cubs so that he could bring them to their mother. He began to look for any tracks or signs of where the mother had come from. He eventually found a few remaining prints in the patches of snow around the edge of the bog. The prospector followed the tracks, which led him half a mile through the forest and then up a rock-strewn slope. Finally, at the base of an enormous spruce, John saw the wolf's den. John walked up to the den cautiously. He didn't want to scare the already shy and cautious pups away, as he knew getting them out of their den would be tricky enough already. The den was silent, giving no indication of whether the cubs were still in there or not. But John had to try to get their attention in order for this plan to work. He began by imitating the call of their mother, a high-pitched squeak. But still, there was no sound or movement from the den. John didn't give up and began his calls again. This time, four tiny pups appeared at the mouth of the cave. They slowly walked up to John and began suckling at his fingers. They couldn't have been more than a few weeks old, and they were obviously starving. One by one, John picked up the pups and placed them into his burlap bag. With the baby wolves securely held in his bag, John turned around and headed back down the slope towards their mother. Upon returning to the trapped mama wolf, she quickly stood to attention when she noticed John coming back to her. She let out a high-pitched whine, as if she knew that the man had her babies with him. John released the pups from his bag, and within moments, they were all suckling at their mother's belly. Even though the pups were all fed and well now that they were back with their mother, John still didn't know how to free the female canine. Every time that he tried to get close to the little family, the mama would growl at him and warn him back. Resigned that he wouldn't be able to free her straight away, John went in search for something for the mama wolf to eat to keep her strength up. He came across the leg of a deer carcass and cut off a hindquarter. John knew that if he was ever going to free the trapped animal, he would have to gain her trust, and food was usually the best way to do this. It would take time though, something that John had plenty of. The prospector made a rough shelter for himself near the wolf family, and was soon asleep. The next morning, he was awoken by four fluffy bundles of fur sniffing at his face. It seemed he had earned the wolf pup's trust, but still had a ways to go with their mama. Over the next few days, John split his time between prospecting and trying to help the trapped canine. He would throw her venison and would play with her babies, hoping to show that he was not a threat. Each time that the man would interact with the animals, he would edge a little bit closer to the trap. In the evening of the fifth day, John was delivering the female wolf's daily dose of venison when he noticed something encouraging. The wolf wagged her tail slightly. Delighted that it looked like the animal finally trusted him, John sat down only eight feet away from her, so close that if she had wanted to, 
The wolf could have broken his arm with just a snap of her jaws. The man then drifted to sleep, surrounded by the wolf family. The next day, John awoke to the sound of the pups nursing. He carefully petted them in greeting. To his surprise, the mother wolf didn't growl or even move. Taking this as a good sign, the man then put his hand on the wolf's trapped leg. She flinched, but didn't make a move to stop him. Finally, after days of trying to gain her trust, all of John's efforts were paying off. He examined the steel trap and saw that its jaws had only caught two of the animal's toes. They were swollen and cut, but she wouldn't lose the paw, which was more than the man had been hoping for. John found the release catch and quickly pressed down on it. Now finally free, John expected the mama wolf to gather her pups and disappear into the woods. But she did something much different, which shocked John entirely. The wolf slowly crept up to the man and began to lick his hands and fingers. John was astonished. It went against all his knowledge about wolves, but he was more than happy to let it happen. After a while, the mother decided that she was ready to leave, so she gathered up her pups and walked towards the forest. Before disappearing completely, she turned back to John as if asking him to follow her. John understood, gathered his belongings, and followed the animal. They eventually ended up ascending Kupranuf Mountain and came upon an alpine meadow. Along the edge of the meadow lurking in the shadows was a wolf pack of around nine adults and four nearly full-grown pups. The mama wolf and her pups approached the pack, and after a few minutes of greeting, the entire family broke into howling. John watched from a distance, amazed that he was witnessing something so spectacular. As night fell, the man set up his camp. By the light of his fire, he could see multiple wolf shapes darting in and out of the shadows, but he wasn't scared. He knew that they were simply curious about him. As dawn broke the next day, John knew it was time to leave. He gathered up his things, with the mama wolf watching the entire time. As he reached the far side of the meadow, John looked back one last time. The mama wolf and her pups were sitting where he had left them, watching him. John waved his final goodbye, to which the mother wolf let out a mournful howl. He then turned around and descended the mountain. He would never expect what would happen next. Four years after this encounter with the wolves, John returned to Coho Creek after serving in World War II. As he walked through the familiar woods, something caught his eye. It was the rusted steel trap that he had saved the mama wolf from all those years ago. Seeing the trap, John suddenly got a strange feeling. Something was telling him to return to the meadow where he had last said goodbye to the wolf family. Following his instincts, John climbed the mountain until he was at the meadow. He let out a long, low wolf call, something that he had done many times before. And to his surprise, a howl responded. John called again, and once again, a howl responded. He then noticed a large dark shape moving in his direction. As it crossed the meadow, he could see that it was a timber wolf. But it wasn't just any old wolf. It was the one that he had saved. The animal stopped just in front of John, her bushy tail wagging slightly. Then as quick as she had appeared, she disappeared into the woods again. John left the island not long after, and whilst he never saw the animal again, the memory of her and her pups stuck with him for the rest of his life. It's not known whether this story is true or not, but the magical experience of sharing a special bond with another animal is one that many of us know the feeling of because of our own pets. And sometimes, if people are lucky, they get to have a once-in-a-lifetime experience, much like John did with his wolves. What would you do if you came across a wolf in need? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for daily inspiring videos. See you next time for more amazing stories.